All right, praise God. All right, they got me on. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We want to welcome those on Facebook, Instagram, and any other media. We welcome you to Turning Point Fellowship Thursday night Bible study. Amen. 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 And so um, we know it's going to be a good night. Powerful praise and worship with our worship team here. Amen. They still won't let me play my ukulele. I just don't understand that, you know. But anyway, praise God. You may be seated for a second. We're going to make a few announcements. Uh, well, first of all, praise God. That uh, New Year's Eve service will be here Saturday, starting at 3 to 5 p.m. You know, come on out. They'll have some games. Bring some finger foods. Finger foods. And some, uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And so uh, some water and some stuff. Bring some snacks out and have a good time that, sad, that Saturday. This Saturday. And then New Year's Eve service, New Year's Day service is starting at 10 o'clock. Yeah. I know there were some things that said 11 o'clock, but it's 10 o'clock. Amen? Uh, then uh, our monthly potluck has moved to January 8th. Instead of the first, it's January 8th, okay? And I know you guys love that because we have a long line, waiting in line to get some, some that good food that all of you make. A couple of more is that uh, Men of a Higher Standard is going to be mo uh, Saturday, January 7th at 9 o'clock. And then the women's ministry, yes, it's 14th, okay, amen. Yeah. So there's a lot of things happening at the beginning of the year. Uh, don't stay home. Come on out. Enjoy, because the Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship of the brethren. And, you know, we'll have a good time. Amen? That's why it's called Turning Point Fellowship. Amen? Praise God. Now you can stand up again. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before the throne of God, we ask that there be an open heaven tonight, that as the worship and praise goes forth, it will be a sweet aroma to your nostrils. We thank you for the anointing upon the worship team, upon the singers. We ask, Lord, that there be our hearts, every person that comes this, this evening, their hearts are open to come and pour out the gift of worship and praise to the King of kings and Lord of lords, that we praise you, Lord. We would come forth to the altar and not inhibit, be inhibited or intimidated, but we come forth with a praise, with a fresh song, with a fresh sound in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as you gather together, you said, wherever two or three are gathered in your in our midst, there you are, Lord. You're in our midst. You're going up and down the highways. And Holy Spirit, have free flow. Without you, Holy Spirit, we can't have a, a Holy Ghost service, Lord. So we want the Holy Spirit to come and move in a mighty way in us and through us, Lord, that we would hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We give you all the praise and all the worship. And everyone said, Amen. give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. I hope you came ready to worship because I know I did. Amen? Amen. Oh. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get going. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. People from every, people from every nation and tongue. From generation to 
new generation. We worship you. We worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. You are good. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. So good, amen. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good all the time. And all the time. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, all the time, you are Let me hear the people of God. You are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good. All the time, all the time, you are. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and time. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Worship and worship and come on, worship us. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, for he is so good. Yeah. Woo. Worship his holy name. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Yes, Lord. We're here to worship you and only you, Father. We're here in exalt your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to you, Father. Lord. Yes,
You are good. You are good. Good. Oh. Let the king of my heart, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the anchor of my days, oh, he is my soul. You are good. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, so good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you're never going to let, you're never going to let. He's never gonna let, never gonna let, let me down. Come on, sing it to him. Never. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Come on, proclaim that out. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. He's never, never gonna, gonna let, let you down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Because you are good, you are good. Get an amen. He's so good. We worship you, Lord. We worship your goodness. Sing out a praise. Sing out a praise for the Lord of Lords. We sing hallelujah. We sing out. We cry out to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are. How I find my battles. This is how I find my Come on, battles. sing it out. This is how I find my battles. Over every circumstance, sing it. Come on. This is how. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how. Come on, this is how we fight. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. Raise your hands, church. This is how I fight my battles. This is how there's a table. There's a table that you prepared for me. In the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Yes, Lord, and I believe. And I believe you overcome, and I will lift my song up. Praise for all you've done. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We're surrounded by your love. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. My victories in Jesus' name. My victories in Jesus' name. Come on, the name of Jesus. My victories in Jesus' name. 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 My victories in Proclaim that out. Jesus name. My victories in Jesus' 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 name. Victories in Jesus' name. My victories in Jesus' name. My victories in Jesus' name. My victories in Jesus' name. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Our voices to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift Give up your voice. Shout of praise. Yes, hallelujah. We exalt you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. We... Thank you, Father. We love you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. No place we'd rather be, Father. No place we'd rather be. How I live for the moment. How I live 
right there, man. You guys don't know it, man. That's some worship right there. You know, uh, the Lord has taught me in my years that sometimes we don't need a drummer. Sometimes we don't need a lead guitar. Sometimes we don't need a lead singer. He just wants your heart. He wants your heart. He just wants you to worship him. You know, just, I love you. Tell the Lord that from your heart. I love you. Practice that. Practice that and it'll drop in you. And it just won't be by the, by the teeth. You know, they say, por los dientes nomás. You know, it's going to come from the heart. Even you children, teach your children. Sonny, you know, say, I, I love you, Jesus. Say it, Sonny. I love you, Jesus. Amen. We got to do that. Just bless the Lord and honor the Lord. Go ahead and have a seat for us, please. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering. Come on, let's get excited, people. Let's get excited. This, we're leaving the last. We're leaving the last. This is the last week of 2020, 22, amen? So uh, we're about to enter in 2023. That's, a, that's funny right there, man. That just, that's mind-blowing, huh? 23, whoever thought that, man? You're born in 1960, and now you're, uh, I'm giving my age away, but it's all right, man, ain't it? Ain't no shame to my game. Amen. <laughs> we're, uh, uh, we're here to bless God. So raise your hands and these handsome married men will get you uh, an envelope, you know. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right. You gave me one. I've been getting two here lately. So I got I to, gotta, you got to practice what you preach. Amen. They give you two. It's for a reason they gave you two. It ain't just, oh, man, I'm going to use that one for next week. Because I, I pick up flowers. I pick up flowers. I pick up uh, a Bible sometimes, and I see two, three envelopes there. I'm like, oh, man, they missed out. They missed out an opportunity to bless God, to honor God. You know, it ain't, it ain't the, the amount that you put in this envelope. It is not. If it's $5, $50, or $500, or $1,000, it's not the amount. When you think, I'm going to get blessed more because I put $500. No, when you do it from the heart, that's when God blesses us. And I've learned that in, through experience. But I want to I share this, this uh, 
scripture with you there, uh, Jesus. Luke 6.38. Luke 6.38 out of the New King James Version. Matthew 6. I said Luke, but it's Matthew. I'm sorry. Matthew. I even wrote down 6. But it's Matthew 6. When uh, they told me I could do the... It's funny that... Uh, <laughs> it's... it's Pastor Eric, it's, it's, it's him, it's, it's humble, it's humbly, you know, that uh, they would ask me to do this, you know, to be honest with you, you know, being the pastor. Matthew 6. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he, he's doing my signal. <laughs> Matthew 6, 38. Matthew 6, did I say 6, 38? Yes. Oh, I, I wrote, I'm sorry, man. I'm all messed up here. Luke 638, Luke 638. I was correct the first time. Holy Come God. on, man. Holy Ghost. Yes, man. Praise God. You know, uh, uh, the things that I've experienced these last two months, two and a half months, it was... It was sad to me, you know, at the beginning. It was very sorrowful for me to do this. But the Lord has taught me how to be joyful and happy in this moment, in this time. And, we, you know, we have to learn how to be happy. And uh, you got to learn how to dance when it rains. When it's raining outside, you got to learn how to go outside and dance in the rain. Really, you do. You're gonna, you'll, you'll love it, you know. Uh, no matter what you're going through in your marriage and your and your. Uh, relationship with your son you just got to learn how to dance you know in the hallway if the doors aren't open dance in the hallway till the door opens up amen, amen. but i want to i want to share this with you before you guys give it says given it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured back to you amen what a man, what, a, what you sow is what you reap. You know, what you sow is what you reap. What you drop in there, it's not, it's not the amount, like I said. It comes from your heart. The lady, uh, the, uh, lady that gave the two mitts, uh, uh, the little coins, I call it. The two little coins, praise God. That, uh, she gave more than all of us. Because she gave all that she had. She gave her last $5 bills, her last $10, $20. She gave it all. And God blessed her. And said she gave more than the rich people. Because a lot of us could have 20, 10,000 in your savings, 10,000 in your, in your checkings, and you give $100 bills, and you think you did good. And the Lord says, but what about all that? And sometimes the Lord will stretch us with our faith. You know, uh, you've been blessed. You, yes. you know, how many kids do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six and a half right there. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Come on, man. That's, that, that's a blessing. You know, you guys may say, man, oh, man, that cost me a lot of money. You know, it's all right because you can afford that. Because, you know, some people say, oh, I can't afford to have another child. That's a lie. You can have children and God will bless it. If you pray and you bless the Lord, he'll bless you. And you'll meet every one of your needs. You won't lack in any good thing. Amen. Uh, you, uh, you even uh, bring your children to come live with you. Amen. They ain't even yours. They belong to other people. And they're living there for you, you know, with you. Amen. And you're buying groceries and you're giving the money for the movies and all this and stuff. That's the blessing of the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. So that's why we have to continue to give unto the Lord because what you sow is what you get. And what you measured will be measured back to you. This scripture, what it's doing, it's, it's showing us the excellent picture of why we shouldn't be greedy people or stingy people. Because whatever you're measured to, and, you, and, you, and you'll trip. I'm going to be honest. Some of you will trip. Like, oh, we're broke. We don't have nothing. Look at your checkbook. See what you're writing to. Check your, your uh, bank account. What are you giving to? Do you know? Some of, some of you are prosperous and you don't even know it. Some of you rich and you don't even know it. 
you think because where you live says, makes you success. If you live in a one bedroom or if you live in a five bedroom. The richness is in the heart and the joy. We were poor people, man, raised in Compton, California, rice and beans. And if you look at our pictures, we were barefooted a lot. We were barefooted people. You know, our parents were from Mexico. And they just had enough for all nine of the kids. And then we would want to invite our friends over to come eat. And my mom was like, are you crazy? Because yeah. <laughs> I was that type of kid. Like, I, I invited my two friends over. And my mom was like, what? They're going to get some of your pork chop. <laughs> All right. But it just know the excellence of God. You can never outgive God. You know, when, when you think, oh, I, I need to give God a 50. Think bigger. Think bigger. That happens to me all the time. I'll say, I'm going to give God $100 off my offering. The Lord will say, no, I want $200. I want $300. Write it out for $300. And you do it. And God meets the need. That don't mean any money came into my account to make more because I'm a, I'm, a sal I'm a salary here. It, it, they didn't put extra money in my account. It just happens. God stretches that out. And, it, and I'm not missing nothing. I'm not missing. I'm still eating the same and everything, a little bit more. Now I lost a lot of weight. You guys can't call me fat boy no more. Praise be to God. Amen. <laughs> but I just want to encourage you guys. As we end this year, challenge yourself. My challenge has always been to give more than what I make. I don't want to just give the 10%. I want to give 20%. I want to give 25% of what I make. And I'm not going to lack any good thing. And some of you guys think, oh, I'm on Social Security. I'm on a, a fit, a fit uh, uh, salary or income. God can, God can stretch all that. God can stretch that. Like I was asking, talking to uh, the ladies, uh, some ladies here last week. We were in the kitchen. I said, how many TVs do you have in your house? Four. 50, 65-inch screen TVs. How many cars do you have? Three, two, three, four. Cars. Do you ever miss a meal? We even eat extra meals. We eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but then we eat in between. Oh, ain't nobody giving me an amen. You know what I mean? Amen. <laughs> that's how, that's how, prosper, how prosperous we are. You're well, you're whole, and you're prosperous. You're a prosperous person. Your baby's smiling. There was a time she wasn't smiling. I remember when she first got here. And look at her now, man. She's smiling, you know, amen. That, that's, that's the prosperity of God, amen, in our lives, amen. That's beautiful. And some of you are just missing it. You know, you need to smile when I look at you. Just Practice. Practice. There you go, my brother. Amen. Just practice back there. Smile. When you look in the mirror, yeah, just smile, man. It's hard. It takes, takes more work to, to be a frown, to have a frown than a smile. So smile. But give. Give unto the Lord and bless the Lord and all, all that you have. Amen.
the summers come up here and uh, bless the offering. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands forth in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, first I want to thank you for another day of life on this planet. Second, I would like to thank you for a fast recovery for my pastor, Pastor Angel. I want to thank you for everything you have done in my life and everything you have done in every single person in this congregation's life. Without you, we would not be here today. Half of us would have probably passed on to, to another life. So I do appreciate everything you have done for every single one of us. Also, I want to thank you, Lord, for all the ones in here that were able to give and for all the ones that were unable to give but wanted to give. Can you please pour out them blessings to every single person in this congregation so everyone in here could be 100% tithers and givers and make sure that no one in here lacks in any good thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I just, can I have a minute? Just, just a minute. Go ahead and stay stand. Uh, oh, I'm going to go ahead and release you guys. Go ahead. Uh, 
Let's give them a good, nice round of applause. Amen. Uh, I want to say something from my heart to every one of you guys. Last Sunday, uh, they asked me to open up in, in prayer, and I opened up in a rebuke, you know, where I rebuked the church. Uh, if you guys were here, if you guys know what a rebuke is, then I was correcting you guys. Uh, I'm not, I'm not apologizing, apologizing for the rebuke itself, but I'm apologizing for my heart, the way it was. My heart wasn't right, the way I spoke. So I want to say I apologize to you, to every one of you. Uh, if you guys knew what I was taught, what you guys knew, if you were here Sunday, you're paying attention, uh, what I was talking about. But I want to say sorry from my heart. To every one of you guys, just pastor's heart wasn't in the right place at that time. So, uh, but I love you, and, uh, and we're going to bless one another. Amen, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's uh, welcome Pastor Eric up here in Jesus' name. Pastor Angel, he's still trying to get rid of me to get <laughs> Praise God. I love Pastor Angel. I can say I'm a really good friend. Oh, the children? Okay, and the youth? Okay, youth down, you're dismissed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you know when they when they come up here and they say, uh, like myself, uh, we could dismiss the youth. I feel like getting up and going. I feel young, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, I haven't hit Moses' age, so I'm a youth. <laughs> Praise God. Well, let me let me just share something about Pastor Angel. He's such a a man of God that, you know, him and I talk, and like some of the other leaders and. And one of the things is that not everyone understand. I was talking to them the other day, is that understands what he went through. We understand the physical part of his surgery and so forth, but sometimes we don't understand the emotional part. Because see, we're spiritual and we're human. You humanity, right? And sometimes when the doctor tells you all kinds of negative things, it, it, no matter how mighty you are, look at Elijah. You know, he ran after uh, because a woman threatened him. So you understand that sometimes his heart is right, but it, it, there's a challenge that he sometimes faces. So keep him in prayer. He's a good man of God. He, he's, he's a vision carrier of this church. Amen. Praise God. And I'm, He's, he's this close to letting me have a concert with my ukulele. This close. <laughs> Tears will be flowing. Praise God. The, today's message is upgrading our vision from earthly to heavenly kingdom. And you know, it's okay to have two visions. But what is your priority? The upgrade, the the. The meaning of upgrade is raise something to a higher standard, in particular improving by adding or replacing components. Another term is to improve something so that it works better and it's more effective. It doesn't say it's, it's, a, it's a vision, especially of a, a church, and then our vision eventually should be kingdom-minded. We should, we should be focusing on the kingdom rather than the earthly realm of what we want. Now, I, I want to qualify this, is that it's okay to have, you know, we want a new house. My wife wants a new house. Okay, that's her vision, but the, that's not her number one vision. Her number one vision is serving the kingdom of God, Amen. being flowing through it. So, and it's okay to, oh, I want something better. I want a better job. I, you know, I want to... 
uh, better this, uh, better car, so forth and so on, and that's okay, but it should never replace our vision that God has for us, for our purpose, our destiny, for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you for those two amens. Someone's getting it. But we are, we have a vision. And in Proverbs 29, 18, I didn't give the, uh, Jesus this, but I'm going to read it. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he who keeps the law, he is blessed. Now, the word vision in the Hebrew is kazon. It means instructions in God's truth, which was by the prophets through visions, oracles, prophecy, divine communication. That's what vision means. No, and where it says perish, the Hebrew word is para. It shows to lack, it's to show lack of restraint our moral restraint. In other words, we give in to the king, we give in to the world, we give in to our flesh easily because there's no vision, there's no revelation that has come forth. Keeping the law, shamar, it means to keep oneself, refrain, or abstain. So no vision, the people perish. They're without restraint. They're running wild here, there, and everywhere. But those that keep the law, keep the word of God, they'll, uh, they'll abstain from sin. They'll abstain from certain things that are not good for us. What is your vision? You know, a vision should have, well, let me read this so that we can understand together. Hebrews, excuse me, Habakkuk 2, verse 2. two. And it says, this is the New King James, by the way. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets, that he may run that readeth it. Verse 3. For the vision is yet for appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Interesting. For a point in time, when we get a vision or a call or even a prophetic word for something God's calling us to do, it's for an appointed time. It doesn't mean, boom, thus says the Lord, you're going to be an evangelist. Boom, go out and get your business cards. You know, it doesn't mean that. It means that that's the plan that God has for you. It's kind of like this. I like to look at it this way. We... We that are parents, you know, we desire for our kids to do better. We desire for our kids to go to college. That's our plan, hopefully, that, you know, don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe when they're young, you believe they're going to go to college. But if that's the plan you have for them, but if they don't go to college, it's because their decision decided, I'm not going to go to college, I'm going to do something else. See, that's with a vision that God gives us. God gives us, I'm going to make, I'm going to have you uh, be a prophet. I'm going to have you uh, be the best usher ever. And you, oh, I don't want to do this. I want to be a singer. I want to do this. I don't want to know what you want. I want. But you know what? God's plan is so awesome. And we step into it and know that God has a plan for our lives. He knows our heart, and he's giving you a vision. Let me ask you, what is your vision? Oh, well, I'm believing for a house, and I'm believing for a spouse. Oh, yeah, that's my number one thing, a spouse. Oh, my God, don't let that be number one. Let it be four, five, six, seven, ten, fifty, or something down the line, you know, because what happens is that we focus, once we have a spouse, then our, our whole, where we, before we had a spouse, we're like, oh God, what do you want me to do? I'll, I'll be there at, at service at, uh, I'll be there at service at 840 because I know we're supposed to pray. <laughs> no amens, right? I threw that in for free. But we, we have a vision. God has given us a destiny and purpose for the kingdom of God. What are you doing with it? 
Well, I don't have a vision. I don't know. Well, keep on serving. You'll run it into it no matter what. A rise man of God, you know that I've, I founded a rise man of God. Now, I prayed for 40 days. I fasted for 40 days, which is a lie. Okay. I didn't do that. It was just like one of these things. I was doing something and looking for a men's fellowship and I... And, and bumped into it. I bumped into uh, what God wants me to do with the rise men of God. Amen. He probably still wants me to fast 40 days, 40 nights, you know. But the thing is, is that I serve. I, I've been saying, married 41 years. I've been saved 40 years. I've served two churches, each church 15 years each. I served under a man of God, an apostle, and so forth. Started a church on my own. And we still have Bible study, but I started a church on my own, for, and it's been like nine years now. And it, it, wasn't, it was great at the beginning. You got 25 people, and then you had five people, and then you had just my wife and I. And Okay, Lord, did I miss it? Let me share this with you. I'd rather do something in faith for the kingdom of God and miss it than do nothing. Than do nothing. There are so many believers that, well, I don't want to step into it because I may fail. So what if you fail? Just get back up. But I believe that, that the church is called his dwelling place was not a failure. Why? Because out of a church of, a, of my wife and I and the Spanish lady, Irma, we started a rise man of God that's going all over California and one place in Las Vegas. The words God says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Will you be faithful with what God's called you to do? Do something. You know, Pastor Angel was going to usher tonight because there was not enough men. Last week, I, I, I was going to do the same thing. I was going to usher because there was not enough men, but they fired me. I don't know why. <laughs> I was able to walk one person down. I think it was Ed. <laughs> and, I, and, and then the next day, I go back up, and he goes, Pastor, you can sit down. Amen. The rejection I felt. <laughs> what did I do wrong? You know? Do something. Until the vision becomes clear to you. Seek God. Pray. You know, David was out with the sheep. He wasn't like, oh, look, they're going to anoint the next king. I want to be up there. No, he did what he was supposed to do. Watch the sheep. If you don't do anything, then nothing's going to happen. It's like looking for a job, and you're at home looking for a job, and you're, and you're there, well, I'm going to wait for the phone to ring. No, I didn't send out my applications or resumes, but <laughs> believe me, God, I know you, that phone's going to ring. One day, one week, one month, one year, ten years, it will not ring because you have not taken a step of faith to do something. Every church needs help. I don't know why I'm kidding on that, but it's good anyway. Appointed time, appointed place, appointed meaning. God has an appointed time. You know when Jesus was with a wine, with a wedding, and Mary asked him, you know, they don't have no wine. They ran out. We need you to do something. And this is so interesting. And Jesus said, it's not my time. It's not my time to do miracles. You know what Mary did, which is so cool? It's like she didn't even listen. She goes to the, the people and she goes, whatever he asks you to do, just do it. You never saw that, did you? That she was able to get Jesus, the son of God, to do something he wasn't called to do at that time. What is your faith? 
What vision do we have for the kingdom of God? And again, I'm, I don't want to, if you have a vision for uh, a spouse or, or a home or something, go for it. But don't let it be number one before God in the kingdom of God. Because then we miss it. We get so focused on, I want a new car. That's all you think of. You don't even tithe because you want a new car. I, I, you know, if I, if, I, if I give this money to the tithe and offering, I could use this money for the car. Vision. Appointed time. Habakkuk first had to see the vision. Let me go back. Upgrade. I, I, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but that's okay. Upgrade is to do something to improve something. You know, like upgrade your computer. I always, ever, anyone ever watch that program, Two Time, Two, two Man? Anyone? Oh, yeah. Bobby, all right, I'll come over here. <laughs> he, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Every time he got like a, a lawnmower, he had to hype it up. I mean, so he could go faster and do more. I mean, he upgraded everything in his kitchen, in his house, his car. He upgraded everything he could think of because that's his mentality. It's okay, but it's not good enough. I'm going to use my example because I, 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 I know that Turning Point has a vision. The man's right there that carries it. And, and he doesn't even have to tell me what the vision because I could see it. I could see restoring families. Restoring families. I could see it raising men to be the right men of God. I could see it, even the women, to be the rightful women of God that God's called them to be. And most of all, I can see the youth getting the next generation to take over when we get to heaven. When I see the kids coming up and putting their offering in because parents maybe gave them money or however they got it, and I see the teens do that, it touches my heart. Because parents, you're setting them up for success. You're setting it up to be righteous in the kingdom of God by knowing, learning how to give. And when these kids read the phone number, that blows me away. It does. It blesses me to hear these kids read the number that's up there for the tithes and offering. I don't know what it does to you. Oh, big deal. To me, it does a lot. Because I've been at two churches. 15 years, good churches, mighty churches, but I've never seen the youth like they hear at Turning Point Fellowship. And, the, and you know what? I, I appreciate the men of God here at this church. You know, uh, I get blessed. I, I was telling Hugo the other day, or telling Pastor Angel, you know, coming out of ministry, two churches, I served a lot. I was an usher all 15 years for the first church, became an elder. Second church, served, was an, uh, ordained as a pastor. And I'm, so I'm always serving. Come here. Ryan's out there. Here, let me take your coat. Let me take your jacket. Let me take your breakfast. Well, it's okay. I'm so used to doing it on myself. Hugo comes, Pastor, you want some water? Pastor, do you, do you, how, which one do you want to listen to? You, your, your mouth, um, the speaker. It blesses me. Amen. It's like I'm rejoicing. It's like for the years that I laid and served. Now I got brothers just for a year that will help me and take make sure I'm okay. I thought I was going to get one of Pastor Angel's motorcycles, but that's over. <laughs> go right. But guess what? We're going to start a Jeep club, and we're going to go Jeeps. <laughs> yeah, you get a certain age. The motorcycles are out. The Jeeps are in. Praise God. 
but it's for a point in time. The upgrade is so important. In your family, you got to keep on upgrading. Whatever vision you have, you got to keep up upgrading. You got to make it better than what it was. And I'll, and I'll show you this example. David, tabernacle, and Moses, tabernacle. Each one was for a point in time. Moses, tabernacle was appointed. They had the Ark of the Covenant. They had a tent. They had the inner... Uh, they had the brazen altar. They had all these things there. They sacrificed animals for the sins. They had a priest going once a year. And they put bells, just kidding, you know, they put bells on the priest. You know why? Because if he was in sin, God, he, his life is over. And so they have to get a bells and a rope tied to him to pull him out. Could you imagine that, Jerry? Okay, Jerry, <laughs> your turn. <laughs> you go in, okay, let's, let's tie these bells around you, make sure you're naked, let's get a row, right? Once a year. But it was for that time that was so critical. And as I, I was meditating on today, it's because it gave the church structure. Sometimes you're getting some churches and they're going all kinds of crazy things. But we need structure first before we're led by the Spirit of God Amen. to do the things that God's called us to do. Amen. And then all of a sudden, David comes up. And his heart was to build a tabernacle for God. And in his tabernacle, at the beginning of animal sacrifice, but after that, there were not any. In Moses' tabernacle, there were no singers. There were no instruments, and only one priest could go one at a time. But all of a sudden, David came on the scene, and he said, no, I don't want the animals. I want, God wants the heart of the people Amen. to worship and to praise him. Amen. So he had the instruments. He had the singers. He did it all. That's what they did 24 hours a day, the tabernacle of David. See, the... David upgraded from the tabernacle of Moses. Don't get me wrong. Again, hear it quickly or clearly. There was nothing wrong with, with Moses' tabernacle. For at that time, they needed something for structure, and he brought it to them because God gave them the plan on how to do it. He gave them the colors. He gave them the size. Could you imagine how God was so in detail on the, taber on, on the tabernacle. He didn't say, oh, and, and, and you know, Moses wasn't the one that built it. But could you imagine him building the tabernacle? Oh, man. The curtains. Ten feet. Oh, God. How about nine feet? I, I like nine feet. I think nine feet is better, Andy. Oh, you know what? Blue and gold. I, I'm, not trying, I'm not saying these are the colors, but I, they may be. But because I haven't studied in a long time, that. But I'm saying, you got a blue and gold curtain. Oh, no. And some of you sisters, nah, that's not gonna work. Yeah. I'm blue and gold. <laughs> no. Blue and green, maybe. Yeah. I know God told you, Moses, blue and gold. But I'm, hey, I'm here, and I, I. I'm able to see these things. But he, Moses built it, they built it, and guess who paid for it? The people. The people, he said, bring the offerings in so that we can build a tabernacle. What do you think this church is? You bring in your tithe and offering, it's to build. I think this is an awesome church building. Yeah. It's an awesome church building for an awesome people. Yeah. Even those that know how to play the ukulele. 
Well, we need to upgrade. We need, you know, just because we did it so like this all the time, God's saying, okay, that was good then, but now let's change it. Let's do some different things, you know, because, see, what's so interesting is that Tabernacle of Moses, the Tabernacle of David were up at the same time. Think about this. The tabernacle was not with Moses, it was with David. But yet the priests continued to do what they used to do, offer up sacrifices, do everything that they were told to do. But God wasn't there. You see, vision is for a point in time, and sometimes the vision is great at the beginning, but then God says, now I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to move it to a different way. No, this is the way we've always done it. You know, a rise man of God, I'm not real honest. I'm being transparent. I'm not really, oh, God and I face to face like you talked to Moses. So, you know, uh, but God gives me ideas. Think about this. Started out first two years, one conference a year. And I was happy because we built up. Jerry, we'll build up to once a year now, and because that takes a lot of work. And then this apostle friend of mine, you know, Eric, you need to do more. What? I like it this way. I'm not pressured or stressed to know what to do. I like it. But I was obedient because I know he was ta- hearing from, the, from God himself. So we do, God's doing everything. The speakers, we got more different speakers. This year, we have two new churches that have opened up their, their church for a rise of God. That's right. Amen. God's opened up this location for Turning Point Fellowship. He turned, he said, he told Pastor Angel, enough, you've been you know, going from one place to another, I'm going to get you a place just for yourself. Just, and come on, brothers, isn't it great that you don't have to break down the equipment and take it somewhere and bring it up? Amen? <laughs> okay, let's fold up the chairs. Let's put them over there and let's do all this stuff. That was a lot of work. But you see, from what I know from Turning Point, I've been over a year now, that I've seen faithfulness. I've seen the men and all of them, the whole church, not just the men, but the women, the sisters, doing things by faith, by working hard. And, and people don't see that, but God sees it. God sees everything you've done. Why? It's to fulfill the vision of Turning Point Fellowship. Each one of you have a part. Each of you, well, I don't know, I just come and I just sit here and listen to who's ever up there. Maybe they have something good, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so, the, I, I, I'm not saying it happens, but I'm, I'm sure some of you are like, oh, there's Pastor Eric, go, cut it, no, no more. You know, this, this is not a fist of power. No, it's a. It's like the the worship team. I learned that is when they're ending the song, they want to end it. They go like this. Power. <laughs> oh my God, He created me to be me. <laughs> but you need. To, Habakkuk said, "You need to write the vision down." I was asking my wife, so I forgot to get one, but I wrote the vision down of a rise man of God. It's a, it's a brochure, and I made it. And it's simply, I made it simple because the church I came out of, oh, my God, I couldn't do it. You had a mission statement. You had a, a vision statement. You had a statement statement and all kinds of things. And it, it was like, okay, that's all good. And I, it was all good. Don't get me wrong. That was good. It was just not me. I'm simple. I don't need to make it. You know, and, 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 you know, a lot of educated people will have a, man, a whole paragraph, 10 paragraphs of the vision, a mission, and all this stuff. But that's not me. And the vision of our arisement of God is to impact the men. With a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit that they will impact their, 
the, the kingdom of God. They'll impact their families. They'll impact the city. They'll impact the state. They'll impact this world. That's what the vision that God's given me. And it, and it adds and it increases. It's different. I, praise God. Um, Diego has, has um, helped us out. He's up there playing the guitar. Uh, Henrique is helping us out because the worship team comes from different churches. And so I, I, and Diego knows this, he goes, I do not put pressure on them because they have a responsibility at their home church. And I tell them, I go, you know what, if you can't make it, don't worry. Woo doo doo, my ukulele. <laughs> and that changes their mind. <laughs> my best day, I'll be there, don't worry. <laughs> no, but they come. And so God always provides. But God has shifted a rise of God. It's, 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 it's change. Because you don't want a pond. You want a river. See, rivers are always flowing. A pond stays there, and that's it. And so I'm going to challenge you, all of you, for your, your vision this year, 2023, is to upgrade it. Don't keep it the same. And the way you do it is talk to other people that have done this. Well, you know, I, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I know some of the leaders here are, are called, but they're called at an appointed time. Bible says that promotion comes from the Lord, not from man. And we have to understand that. But Habakkuk wrote it down. He wrote the vision so that people can read it and run with it. If you read the vision, can you run with it? You know exactly what it's saying. Because sometimes, like I said earlier, sometimes it's so big, it's like, okay, <laughs> I got to the part of this is a vision and that's all I got. <laughs> you know? So we have to make sure that the vision is fresh. And God will continue to upgrade your vision in your family vision. But you know, if you have a vision but you don't have a plan, forget it. Well, you know, we're going to buy this house because my wife and I are, are we're in agreement we're going to buy this house. What's your plan? Oh, I don't know. Pray. You should have a plan about saving. You should have a plan about where you want to live. You should have a plan about, you know. And, and in fact, more than that, if you're, it's too bad the youth's not here because I would really tell the youth, is that you're thinking about a, Companion, you better go make sure you have a list of what you're looking for. And the first thing that that person has is a love for God. And, and if, he doesn't, if that person doesn't have a love for God, just erase everything out. Just forget it, you know. Because it doesn't matter how good looking like Pastor Angel is, you know. <laughs> you know, one of the things Pastor Angel, you got a terrific smile. I've seen pictures, you got a great smile. He, he, he should be, you know, they should be in GQ, you know. <laughs> but doesn't he have a great... <laughs> Prof, but, but vision is so critical. Without a vision, the people perish. They're unstable. They don't know what to do. They're just living life. You know, I was talking to someone today, and it's like 22 is already gone. What has happened in 22? Think about it. How fast 22 has gone? 23. Vision. Our vision, they mean, number one, is kingdom focus. Why? I hear a lot of things on, I don't listen to a lot of prophets. My wife has a connection with uh, I'm a, something that she listens to, and I'm not a woman of God, very prophetic and so forth. But I kind of hesitated because I need to hear God for myself. And a lot of it's doom and gloom. Doom and, gloom. and I, you know, you can look at it, you can look at the news in 10 minutes and can see 2023 is like, it sucks, excuse the expression.
So if you have a vision, an earthly vision over God's vision for the kingdom, you're going to fail. You're going to miss up. You're going to hurt. But if you have a kingdom vision, God's promises, and you stand and stand and stand, God will bring us through that. Yet I walk through the valley and shall death. I shall not fear no evil. You see, if we don't have God's word in us, we will succumb, succumb to fear. Just listen to the news and you're terrified, you can't even sleep. But if we have a vision, a revelation, and draw close to God, we'll make it through. It may be a little tough, but guess what? God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Every time God, something, something happened, he had Goshen when, when Egypt was, was with all those uh, plagues that they had. They were in Goshen. They ran through the Red Sea. They, they got through it, people, because they had a vision. They had a leader with a vision to seek God's kingdom and not man's. One of the things I believe in 2023 is that families, and this is what has been taught here in Praise God, there has to be more unity in families than there's ever been before. Thank you for those couple of claps. You know why? Because a house divided will not stand. And if your spouse is divided with you, forget it. It's not going to happen because you're going to argue, this is right. No, that's right. Because you have a different opinion. You see th things from a different point of view. And let's face it. I'm not saying anything against the women. I'm not saying anything against the men. But we see things different, don't we? Sisters, do, 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 do you see some different than, than men? My wife always tells me that. She goes, oh, <laughs> you, you can. You're, I, my wife, I love her. But uh, the other day, no, she probably doesn't want me to share this. <laughs> okay, my wife loves me, okay. <laughs> but she's always, you know, with different thoughts. But the other day, she goes, uh, because we're always talking, my sense of humor is better than hers, right? And I go, I go, you don't have a sense of humor. You know what her response was, Bobby? Yes, I do. I married you. <laughs> <laughs> I had no comeback. That was it. It was over. I was, that was it, you know. And she was laughing. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. <coughs> it's, <coughs> it's true. Sometimes she tells me something that she thinks is funny. I go, I guess I have to be there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, you know, I share that because, <laughs> see, my wife, we're, we're not going to see the same <laughs> things differently. Almost finished, I know. So think about 10 minutes, five. You, you did it twice. That <laughs> <laughs> Two scriptures I want to leave you with. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Revelation says, those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. John 10, 27. Those that have, Jesus' sheep know his voice. Do we? Because he'll speak into existence those things that are not. But I'm, I, I encourage every married couple and I believe the married couples here are strong. I know you got, you know, like my wife and I just shared an intimate time, you know. But we love each other. You cannot stay married for 41 years and not love one, each other, right? Yeah. And so she, uh, but a sheep no, hear the voice of the Lord. And 27 
Psalms 27, 13. It's one of my, I mean, sometimes they want, this is my favorite scripture, but you know, really the Bible is all our, should be our favorite scripture, right? But I like this one. It says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What does that mean to us? It doesn't mean that when we get to heaven, we're going to see, we're going to see the goodness of the Lord in heaven. That's for sure. That, no question. But what the psalmist is saying, while I'm here on earth and I'm alive, I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> Jerry, we're going to see the goodness of the Lord. We may be going through hell, they, you know, stand in line because of all the craziness of the food shortage, the money shortage, and shortage shortage. They say shorty shortage? No. <laughs> we may see all that stuff, but guess what? We're going to make it because we're going to see God's goodness in the land of living. <laughs> what is your vision? Don't have one? Get one. Don't have one? The church has a vision. Just find out where you fit in church. And don't, you know what? You got some great leaders here. Talk to them and say, you know what? I, I don't know exactly what to do. Now, you ushers, I know there's only a couple. I have to confess that I, ran, I walked someone down today, I mean the other day, and then they fired me. But I was watching Pastor Angel because he said he was an usher today. I didn't see him walk anyone down. <laughs> 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 <Fire. laughs> yeah, him and I are just like you know, for fall inside as they were, you know. <laughs> but anyway, the ushers. I want I want to say this to you, ushers. It's an honor to walk in God's people in the church. Amen. It's an honor to know that. Someone could be going through hell and discouraged, and they'll see you, and if you have a smile on your face, that will encourage them. Amen. Fifteen years, the first church, I was an elder, and I, I was an usher. And I told God I was getting discouraged, in case some of you ushers ever get that way. And I told God, I, I really don't want to be an usher anymore. Because why? one time I was back, greeting people, coming in, and one person said, hadn't seen him for a couple of years. And he comes and goes, oh, you're still an usher. He didn't say that to, oh, praise God. You're so, you know, he said it to, to try to embarrass me that you're, you haven't grown, you haven't matured. But then the Lord quickly spoke to me and said, you're still here. He had not been here. That shows faithfulness. And that, but after that, I felt like quitting. But you know, I, it's, I think it's just so important for you ushers to hear this, is, is that I was, I, was, I'm serious, I was ready to just, I don't want to usher anymore, I'm just tired of it. And then one brother came up to me, and he goes, Eric, he goes, I get joy watching you usher. You're such a blessing. And in my mind, he doesn't know I want to quit. <laughs> you know, it's over, it's done, I, I made a decision. But out of that, I made a decision to say, God, I want to be the best usher this church ever had. Right. Yes. And I could, I could say it without question that I believe I did become the best usher that church ever had because I made a decision. Give it my all. Give your, your kingdom vision your all. And God will not let you down. Amen. I love you. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to me. But we want to need. We need to do one thing. Uh, we're going to pray for Eric's son, Eric. Why don't you come up here, Pastor Angel? Got a mic.
I, I, I understand you're going somewhere? I'm going back to Texas. To Texas. So he's leaving the family here and going back to Texas. And so that's tomorrow, right? Uh, yes. Hallelujah. Well, why don't you guys stand up here? I want you guys to realize, uh, receive him like if he was your son. Yeah. Like if he was your nephew, your friend. Like if he was a person that, of interest to you. He is. This is your brother in Christ. And the second, he serves God, but he he uh, protre uh, pro protect, protects. He protects the United States of America. Yeah, he's in the military. Amen. You're an army man, right? He's an army man. Amen. So I think we should always bless them and honor them. Yeah. Say thank you to them. Thank you to them, you know, in Jesus' name. If you see them in their fatigues and all that, ready to buy them their lunch, man. right? When you see them, just, you know what, I got you. Don't worry about it, you know. We, we got to learn to do things like that. But we're going to go ahead and, and pray for Brother Eric right here in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you and we bless you for this young man. Yeah. This man that you've called, Father, to serve you here in this kingdom and to serve you on earth, Lord God. We thank you for a divine protection over his heart, over his mind, and over his body, Lord God. That no weapon that's formed to be used against him, Father, will prosper. Any word that rises up against him, Father, shall and will be condemned. For this is inherent right, his inherent right, right as a son of God. To live long, to live well, to live healthy, to live prosperous, to live glad and full of joy, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that as he comes and he goes, that you divinely protect him, yes. his comings and goes. I thank you for the divine, Father, call upon his life to serve you, to honor you in this moment and this time. Lord, watch over him. Watch over his brothers, his mother, and his father. Lord, give him vision. Let yes. him hear and let him see what you have for him as a young man. Protect his mind and protect his heart, Father. I pray in thank Jesus' you, Father. name. Thank you, Father. Lord, and as he goes forth, Lord, I thank you for the angels to be a guard around him. Yes. Lord, no weapon formed against this mighty man of God shall prosper. That's right. We thank you that he's blessed, Lord. I thank you that he's surrounded by other men of God yes. to keep it on the right line, Lord, the narrow road. I thank you that he's an example to his family that you bless him, Lord. And Father, I declare his future is bright. Lord, that he, he has a great calling, a great thing happening for him in the name of Jesus. We thank you for his heart, that his heart is not like David, a man after you, your heart, God. So we thank you for blessing him. We speak health, strength, protection in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, you know what? Um, love you guys. <laughs> and we're going to pray. Amen. I thought he was going like this to me. <laughs> Father, we thank you. Lord, let the word in, be planted on good ground. We thank you for vision. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will release vision while they're sleeping, dreams and visions, Lord, to be upon them. I thank you that they're going to get this word and run with it. We ask right now that you will bless these families, bless everyone here, bless those that are on YouTube and, and Facebook. We ask right now that we will come together this Saturday at 3 o'clock, yes. and we will celebrate what you have done in 2022, and then we'll come back Sunday and celebrate what you're going to do in 2023. In Jesus' name, and we all said, uh, you are dismissed.